if you have a TIG welder and you're trying to weld aluminum and it's not quite putting out as much heat as you need it to, it may help you out if you reduce your frequency. So I was always skeptical of people saying if you lower your frequency you get more heat, but it's actually true. I tested it out right here. So identical, identical pulsar settings, identical amperage, everything except for Hertz. And I started out on these thick pieces and I put the amperage where it would barely create a puddle wide enough to where I wanted it. I let it pulse 50 times and then I started welding and saw how far I could get before it started petering out and getting too small. And see how the 60 hertz one, it put more heat input in and I got a longer weld with a wider, a wider bead profile. This one at 300 hertz was getting so small it was barely biting in and I didn't feel comfortable going any further than that versus the 60 hertz one. Neither of these two are as hot as I'd want them to be. I'll talk about that later in this video. But this one, you know, you can tell it's it's a lot. It's got more heat going into the part and fusing in better for a longer distance. So this really got me thinking and I honestly don't know the exact answer why this is the case, but what I think is so right here, I'm clicking this on, you know, more amperage, less amperage. And just to keep this simple, I have it at 60 hertz, and then the wave balance is 50, 50, which I would never use, but that's just it'll illustrate, that's the best way for me to illustrate this. So on 60 hertz, you have this many cycles, and less heat into the part, so you, so you reduce, the amperage, hand amperage controller, foot pedal, whatever, you reduce the amperage and this gets smaller. So the closer all of this is to the center line of zero, the less heat's going into the part. More down here, more heat into the part up here. It's still putting heat into the part, but it's also putting heat back into the tungsten. And that's another topic. But just to keep it simple, the more you push amperage, the more amperage you get, the higher this goes on the screen and the more heat, the more away from the purple line you get, the more heat into the part. So, this is 60 hertz, now watch 300. Okay, here we go with 300. See how many more cycles you get? So what I'm thinking is, the more times you cycle through the zero area, the minimum amperage area, that translates to the less amount of heat you put into the part. So 60 hertz. Three hundred hertz. The less times you cycle through this low amperage zone, the more heat you actually get into the part. And I might be wrong on this, but I don't know. Like this, this though is is one hundred percent factual. I tested it with the exact same settings, other than hertz and I could not weld as far with 300 hertz versus 60 hertz. I started out on a cold plate, cold parts, all I did was tack them together, you know, nearly identical lengths and thicknesses, you know, the same amount of mass. Put that part aside, let it cool, put this down to the exact same thing, and that's what I came up with. So if you got a small TIG welder and you're maxed out on it and you can't quite get the job done, you might want to look into dropping your frequency or getting an argon mix on gas or consider stepping up to old reliable here, Primal 325, that's what I use and recommend. That's the machine that I used to weld this and I had it at 315 amps and just got after it. And then I'm sure you guys are wondering, okay, is he lying? Because he was using this blue amperage controller and the miller in the background. The only reason I use this machine to show the waveforms on the oscilloscope is because the fan's quieter. 
so I can talk over it. See the prime weld machine has a quite a bit louder fan on it, but you know, this with a cooler, two thousand dollars that to get a dynasty now you're spending sixteen grand, so take your pick. This one's the one I use and recommend now. Link on my website, 6061.com, to buy this machine. Okay, listen to the background fan noise. This is the machine I'm using. stuff like this you get a little bit of a frosty weld unless you get the part nice and hot and the temperature stable on it I'm gonna run the first weld just getting after it and you'll see how it's frosty then I'm gonna flip it over and then the backside's gonna be a lot shinier three hundred and fifteen amps just pinning it and getting after it See how that's pretty frosty looking? Okay, now watch the back side now that the part's hot. And I'll probably back a little bit off from 315 because I don't need that much now that the part's warm. See how that's a lot prettier, shinier? Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. If you guys like the way my welds turn out, I have a one-time $45 subscription website no ongoing payment BS you know where I'm trying to gouge you for everything it's just one time forty five dollars I teach you exactly how I weld all my welder settings gas flow rates tungsten shaping tungsten type diameter practice routines arc shots showing you exactly how I weld perspective for my welding hood looking directly at the puddle and if anything is an answer on the website feel free to email me thanks for watching